When you said, I do, you expected your marriage to last forever. You envisioned growing old with your spouse, holding hands in your rocking chair on the front porch. You meant every word of it, till death do us part. You never imagined death would come so soon. Being widowed is devastating at any age. How do you go on without the one you've loved the most? How do you face the challenges of daily life when your heart is broken into a million pieces? How do you find hope when you've lost love? Welcome to the Dr. Gloria and Dr. Heidi Show. This show is brought to you by the Open to Hope Foundation with the mission of helping people find hope after loss. And now, Dr. Gloria and Dr. Heidi. Hello, I'm Dr. Heidi Horsley, and this is my mom, Dr. Gloria. We are psychologists and grief recovery experts, and we will be talking today about questions about spouse loss and how to find hope after loss. Well, Heidi, spouse loss is really quite a thing. It's really tough. Mm -hmm. That person that you've had in your life, that person that you've shared your dreams and your hopes with. You know, I haven't lost a spouse, but we lost, you lost your brother and I lost my son. And there are some similarities in that these are the people that we have had at the breakfast table and mm -hmm. that we have shared these things with, that we've built a life around, that we've had chores with, that we've done things together, that we've had hopes and dreams. And uh, spouse loss is a really difficult thing. I remember one of my friends told me when her husband had died that it's the worst thing that could happen to her in her life. There were so many things that she missed. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, Mom. I mean, I feel like our spouses are parallel travelers in life with us. And we do so much with them. We, like you said, every day we're with them. Um, I've been working with 9-11 spouses that have had someone die in the Trade Center for 10 years. And I can't even tell you what it has meant for these people to lose their life partner. And not only do you lose the person that you love, the love of your life, you, you lose your future mm -hmm. and your future with them. Well, we've got a couple of wonderful guests today on the show that are going to talk about their experience going through this journey. And you know, I, when people say, you never get over it, um, I, I never like that. But you know, I think that if you don't get over it, you transform it. And the people that we have on the show today have transformed themselves mm -hmm. and their lives into doing amazing things. Mm -hmm. We've got Alan Klein on, and Alan Klein mm -hmm. is a jolly ontologist. We'll have to ask him about that. Yeah. But uh, he has written how many books, Heidi? He's written 18 books, and I love what he's going to tell us today because he has used humor to cope and talks about the power of humor. And we want to talk to him. There's actually research on humor, mm -hmm. on how it is a healing uh, aspect. And then Janet Gallon's going to be on, and she has done some wonderful things on uh, writing. And we'll right. be talking to her about that and love letters and things that you can do to heal through that. And both the Janet and Alan had had to raise children uh, after their spouse died, and we want to talk to him about that too, and some of the challenges that we know you folks out there and in our studio audience have had these kind of challenges, and uh, we hope that we'll be help, able to help you out with that today. Yeah, and the thing about both Janet and Alan is that they have gone on to transform their life and to find hope, and we are going to give you tools today, and they will give you tools on how you can do that as well. So let's welcome Alan to the show. Yes, Alan. Hey. Hi, Alan. <laughs> hey, Alan. It's so great to see you. Good to see you. Yeah. Oh, well, Alan, we want to start out by telling the folks a little bit, having you tell them about your journey and uh, what happened to you. Right. Well, it started a little over 30 years ago. My wife went to the doctor just for a physical checkup. Mm -hmm. And he called her back a couple of days later and said, um, you know, I don't kind of like the tests that we did in the office, and uh, I need to put you in the hospital and we'll do some more tests. Mm -hmm. And what happened was he found out she had uh, terminal liver disease, primary biliary cirrhosis. Wow. It's a rare liver disease. There were no transplants, liver transplants at the time. And uh, mostly wi women over 65 got this illness, and Ellen was 31. Wow, that's oh, awful. Incredible. And uh, she did pass away three years later at 34. And you had, what, a 10-year-old daughter? A 10-year-old daughter at the time when she passed away. Wow. And uh, it was a very difficult time, needless to mm -hmm. say. There were no hospices even to turn to. Mm -hmm. But Ellen had a great sense of humor, and it really helped and nourished me remembering that sense of humor. Let me give you an example. Mm -hmm. 
She was in the hospital with a copy of Playgirl magazine with the male nude <laughs> centerfold, and she said, um, hey, Alan, I really like this picture this month, uh, this nude man. Can you <laughs> put it on the wall over here? And I said, Ellen's hospital. She would have escaped <laughs> that. And she said, yeah, well, why don't you get a leaf from the plant and cover up that part? <laughs> <laughs> And I did that, and I realized it was only, what, five or ten seconds of laughter. But it helped us rise above the situation, gave us a reprieve, mm -hmm. gave us a, a, a little bit of laughter to lift us. It gave us a little bit of hope. Yeah. And so after Ellen died, it was Norman Cousins talking about how he healed himself of humor. Mm -hmm. So I went back to school to learn about humor. Uh, I wrote my first book called The Healing Power of Humor. And I got a master's degree in human, H-U-M-A-N, development, but it was all focused on the therapeutic value of humor. Now, you've got some of your books here, right? The yeah, this was the humor. first one, The Healing Power of Humor. Wow. And then I, this is like everyday, how to use humor in everyday situations. Oh, I like that. And then I kind of took that one step further, and I interviewed 100 people, people with cancer, people with AIDS, people with lingering loss, sudden loss. And I asked them, did they find anything to laugh about in that difficult time? Mm -hmm. And about 98 out of 100 said yes, and I documented how they found humor in those serious times. I, I love that, Alan, because one of the things that we find in working with uh, people that have had a loss is that they feel guilty when they laugh. Yeah, people feel guilty. You know, yeah. I remember after my son died, I, my husband and I went uh, to Patootsie, remember that movie? But oh, yeah. it was six months later, and we didn't want anybody to see us laugh, so right. we went to another town. Right, right, right. So. Yeah, people feel guilty. And, you know, for the, some of the books, I interviewed people and asked them, how would your person that died in your life, how would your spouse want you to live your life? Mm -hmm. How would you want them to remember, be remembered? And nearly all of them said, I wanted them, I want to remember the happier times. Mm -hmm. uh, my spouse didn't want me to be sad after I was gone. And yet that doesn't happen. People do feel guilty. Right. And, and you, you know, there's new research. It's in a book called The Other Side of Sadness. And they did a two-year study. This just came out last year. Two-year study of people that have lost a spouse. And, and they found that those who found some laughter right during that time did much better over the next two years than those people that did not. All right. Wow. So I want to just show this book, too. This is your latest, Learning to Laugh When You Feel Like Crying. And then I want to go out to the audience and see if maybe a couple of people have some questions for you. Fantastic. Yeah. All right. Does anybody have a question for Alan? Hmm. No questions for Alan about laughing. <laughs> <laughs> Beverly, you're a great laugher. I think sometimes for me it was hard because the laughing turned into tears. Mm. But it was also healing. We had two daughters who were teenagers and sometimes um, we would re remember something about their dad. And by being able to laugh about it, it let us cry about it. Right. And I was wondering if you could talk about the tears aspect of it. The what aspect? Tears. Tears. Crying. Tears and laughter are very close. You know, I think uh, Gibran said they come from the same well. They come really down deep. The laughter, mm -hmm. you know, ha, 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 and the tears. And, and it's okay to cry. You know, it's okay to laugh. It's not like one is wrong and the other's right. So they're both very therapeutic. And, and the interesting thing to me, there was a study done showing when people cut an onion, they cry. There's no toxins in there. But when you um, have an emotional experience and you cry and the tears, they're getting some of those toxins out. And the same thing when you have a good laugh until you start to cry, there's toxins in those tears also. So it's both of them are really uh, very valuable in loss. And you know, I think somebody up above, whatever, you, I don't know what your religion is, but Whoever it is, I think, has provided laughter for us mm -hmm. to get that toxins out, to get in balance again, because the grief is kind of out of balance, and it draws us back to being balanced. Mm -hmm. So it's very laugh and cry. Mm -hmm. They're both valuable. Mm -hmm. 
So what do you think, uh, I, I have a lot of women who uh, say that their brothers, their fathers or whatever, who've had a loss, they can't get them to laugh. How do you get guys to do that? How do you get people happy again? Well, I don't. Were you I, happy? How long did it take you? No, I was, I was it was like this uh, only time in my life when I felt my heart was breaking, you mm -hmm. know? It was very difficult. But I kept remembering my wife's humor. I kept remembering the good times we had together. I realized I had a daughter. How are we going to live our life together? And so one of the very first thing, I think within the next couple of months after my wife died, I said to my daughter, we need an adventure. Mm -hmm. And we went on an Alaskan uh, trip on the ferry system, the rafting, the seaplanes, the and we still talk about that. It was a bonding time. It was a time to forget about what happened for three years. It wasn't a time to forget about talking about mommy. You know, we did that. Right. We always, we still do. We, oh, mommy would say this, or you know, or we don't have, know how to do something. Well, well what would Ellen do? And, right. Because you know, she always had such a great sense of humor. How would she lighten this up? Right. Oh, I like that. Yeah. So it's not. I think you said something before about forgetting or trying to get over the loss. Right. I'm glad we don't get over the loss mm -hmm. because Ellen is always with me. She's here right now, folks. Right, you know, yeah. She is here. And all these books you've written, have they mainly been connected with laughter and dealing with it? And, a lot and, of them, a lot of just uplifting uh, motivational inspiration. That's but, great. but like uh, learning to laugh when you feel like crying, very simple. I didn't want a lot. You know, I've read grief books and they're usually 300 pages and mm -hmm. tell you how difficult it's going to be. So this is really lighter and it uh, helps you move the five stages, losing, learning, uh, letting go, living, and finally laughing. Oh, mm -hmm. Thank you, Ellen. It's been so great having you on the show today, and I hope everyone will get your book, and I, thank you. And I hope they'll do that healing laughter. And, uh, <laughs> and also, we could all laugh. <laughs> and also, they can go on your website like and find out where you're, you're going to be presenting, too. Exactly. So yep. that is a great thing. Thank great. you. Ben. Thank um, you. Thanks. Thank you, Bye. Alan. Thanks. Well, Heidi, it's, it, it's been great having Alan on the show, hasn't it? It has. I love that he's talking about laughter as being therapeutic, and he's normalizing it and talking about how laughter and crying are very similar. Right. And what is it you say about babies and adults? I remember yeah, when you give is, a talk, you say something about that. Well, it's that. interesting. The research shows that babies laugh on average 300 times a day, and adults only laugh on average 20 times a day. Wow. And like... Like Ellen is saying, we need to laugh more in life. We and need to express our emotions more. Right. It gets up that, uh, those endorphins mm -hmm. and does a lot of great stuff for you. So hope you folks out there in the audience and in TV land will, will find, you know, get some funny movies or something. So Heidi, our next guest, uh, Janet Gallon, is another person who is a brief spouse mm -hmm. uh, many years and has gone on to do some amazing things and some transformational things. And uh, we're going to be interested in talking to her about writing today. So listen... Uh, greet Janet. Okay, very All good. Right. Hi, Janet. So good to see you. Hi, Janet. Okay. Right. Yeah. Let's have a seat. Hello. <laughs> well, Janet, it's so super to have you on the show today. Thank and you. I was telling you, um, we were talking, and I was telling you that that picture that we've got of your husband that you sent us yes. that. It is an amazing picture of you two hugging and... And kissing. And yeah. you know what inspired us? Because do you know, my mother and I were in your office in San Francisco. We saw this intimate picture of you and your husband kissing. Mm -hmm. And we went home and took pictures of ourselves oh, kissing so our spouses. Yes. Because you can only do that yes. while you're around. And I will tell yes. you, everybody out there, take yes. a picture kissing. Take because a picture and write letters mm -hmm. and document yourself in yes. love. Because you may need it more closely than you think you do and sooner. Mm -hmm. But I just want to say ditto. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Everything and, Alan said. And talk a little bit about Dan and what happened with him and, and how you oh. lost him. Well, he committed suicide when he was mm -hmm. 40 and I was 39. Mm -hmm. And we had, and you know, there are always signs that could go either way. Right. And um, our, our daughters were 10 and 14. Mm -hmm. And it was the most horrible phone call I still, when the phone rings, I get, I notice it. I notice, mm -hmm. you know, that something awful can come mm -hmm. at any yeah. minute. And um, it was awful. 
And you're so right when you say you get married forever. He was supposed to be my forever. Mm -hmm. Now, at this stage of my life, 30 years later, I realize he is my forever. Mm -hmm. And he's still here, just like you said, mm -hmm. um, always. Mm -hmm. And I have a friend who lost his wife three years ago. And I so badly want to find somebody for him, and I want to fix him up, and he's just not ready. And he said, I just, I haven't been, I just can't seem to move on. I can't move forward. And I realized as he said that, I said, you know, it's not a matter of moving on. Sometimes it's a matter of moving over mm -hmm. and letting somebody else in. I like well, that. Well, talk, yeah. talk to us about what you do with love letters. And you've got your column and yes. with the San Francisco yes. examiner. examiner yeah, and you can find her online, and she does you interviews yes. and talk about the love letters. Well, though. you know, love letters um, are such a healing business. And mm -hmm. I just want to say first that a love letter is really about the other guy. It's not what you did last summer or this weekend or on your vacation. Those are great letters to write and to get, but different from a love letter. And a love letter is really about the other person. And, you know, I like to say, you, you want to say what you feel while you still have the chance. You have the chance after somebody's gone still to write a really beautiful and meaningful letter. Mm -hmm. Where do you mail it? That's a good question. But you can. You can mail it to yourself. You can mail it to the children. You can mail it to friends. You, you can know, mail it to heaven. If you that can, is your belief. But you know, but I like I like the fact that they land somewhere and they get opened okay. by someone and they get mm -hmm. stuck in some treasure box. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what you can't do is write the letter after you're gone. And how sad to leave nothing behind for other people to see. Mm -hmm. And the the real advantage in this in particular is when you're writing a love letter you don't have to feel unqualified love for somebody. I mean, there are difficult moments in a relationship, difficult moments in some, obviously, in marriages. And, but for the sake of the love letter, you're focusing on only the positive. You're letting the garbage slide by for now. And as you're writing down everything wonderful about somebody else, you are just bathing in the positive. And you will see that your breathing changes and you're smiling and something clears. It's, it's wonderful. Mm -hmm. So you can do forgiveness letters. You yes, can do... I think forgiveness letters, you have to be careful because you have to forgive without saying, I forgive you. It's a little righteous, <laughs> I think. All right. well, and, so, and I love that you can do this whenever you want. And also, there's, there's often so much unfinished business, especially if it's a sudden yes, loss. Yes. And That's to be horrible. able to, to say our final goodbyes and say things yeah. we wish we had said. Yes. Absolutely. So, yes. Well, Heidi, I think we've got uh, uh, the audience for just one question because I want to go out to the okay. audience. I'm going to surprise you Very because good. there's somebody in the audience who told me something today oh. that was so touching about love letters. I wondered if you would tell uh, Janet about it. Uh, sure. Um, oh, you my, want to tell us your name, Marcus? Uh, right? Marcus Redding. Yeah. And uh, my father, actually, when he passed away, uh, my mother had a hard time getting over his departure. and. And I never knew about this, but when my father was in the Korean War, he wrote love letters to my mom, and she brought those out, and that helped her heal. Yes. That. And, that's the, and she shared them with me, and that's the first time I'd even heard about them. Thank you, Marcus. I think that's a, a tremendous story I heard today, and yes. it's actually Heidi's husband, mm -hmm. and uh, I oh. talked to him about it today. It was amazing. Yes, it is an amazing thing, and somehow it's the handwriting. Mm. Handwriting is king in this whole because that's what you have somehow the handwriting carries us nobody mm -hmm. has that handwriting but you everybody has lucida bright and helvetica uh, helvetica on the computer <laughs> nobody has your hand and mm -hmm. sometimes people think my handwriting is so awful i can't really write a letter sure you can unless you've got some physical reason that you can't it doesn't matter how bad it is it's yours and for that alone it's going to be worth a lot and really beautiful and Janet them. you also said you don't have to be a writer to write a letter oh sometimes people say I'm not a writer I'm not a good writer mm -hmm. when it comes to a love letter if you say what you feel you are a good writer mm -hmm. and there's an art to that there's an art to really saying how you feel and being brave enough to do it Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good question. I like that. What a, what a great thing to do. And as I said, thank you for the idea of the, the picture, too. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's an amazing thing. I'm so glad thing. you like that. It's really, I have a picture of uh, myself with my son, and it's interesting because um, he died, and everybody shows that picture everywhere, don't they, Heidi? Yes, because it's, it's a really intimate picture of them hugging, and there's so much love. 
yeah. and it's so intimate mm -hmm. and it's our favorite picture. Yeah. So out there, if you have have a, if you still have a spouse or any loved one, get those pictures of them. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks a lot for being on the show, Diana. Thank it's you. just been wonderful Thank having you. you on today and for all the good you're doing. And I hope people will visit you on your website and look at your little I hope letter. so. Come say hello. <laughs> Thank you, Jana. <laughs> well, Heidi, it's been great to have these two on, hasn't it? Yes, I love their message. I mean, they have gone on to transform their life. They've gone on to live positive lives. And also, they have taken their spouses with them and continued those bonds in new and different ways. Absolutely. It's a wonderful thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have another segment, which is going to be interesting, because one of the things that people have to deal with is cooking, right? Absolutely. Cooking for one. And I, I'm excited for this, because we are going to bring in a chef, Chef Rob. And he's going to talk to us about how you can still have healthy meals and cook for yourself and you know, do it all for one person. Absolutely, so let's see Chef Rob. Yeah. Great, uh, thank you, my name is Rob Morris and uh, I had a few ideas for uh, Gloria and Heidi to share with their uh, guests and followers. Uh, simple meals that are nutritious that will help you get through your day and you'll feel happy and you won't feel laden down. Uh, first, I'd like to start with some uh, goat cheese and uh, I have some nice uh, dry farm tomatoes hey, I'm going to slice up. How are you doing? <laughs> hey, Chef Rob. How are you doing? This Thanks for having me on the show. This is looking really good. Very good. <laughs> we always say you're a good-looking guy with good-looking food. Uh, thank you very much. I'll take the compliment anytime I can get it. <laughs> so what are we cooking up here? So here we have some uh, goat cheese and some uh, dry farm tomatoes. These wow. come from Santa Cruz. They're very nice. Mmm, um, yummy. I love goat cheese. So it's we'll just fat around here. It? Yeah, the goat cheese has a little bit of fat, but then again, you're offsetting it with the... Uh, the tomatoes are, are very healthy and um, You know, it's really tough, tough after you've uh, lost mm -hmm. a spouse or whatever you're cooking for yourself. People tend to either lose or gain weight and, you you know, grab food, right? Brownies, yeah. right. whatever. But I think one of the things is you're trying to keep yourself in, in a positive state of mind. And if you were just to gravitate to, you know, the heavy foods, potato chips, ho-hos, ding-dongs, mm -hmm. those foods might lift you for a moment or two, but later on you feel terrible. Right. And if you keep on that uh, particular diet, you're going to gain weight and you're not going to feel good about yourself. Well, so and this also, I love that your presentation is important, too, when you're right. cooking. Absolutely. Yeah, I so, like that you're presenting. I mm -hmm. mean, you're thinking about one person. You get yourself a nice yeah. white plate. Mm -hmm. You put your tomatoes yeah, you on. You feel good about yourself, yeah. you know, exactly. and enjoy it. And the great thing is that not only does this taste fantastic, these are just a different mixed olives that I'm going to put in here. Um, does it taste great, but you're going to feel good afterwards, and it's going to, you know, give you strength and energy throughout the day. So here I have uh, little olives in here. I'm going to season with a little bit of uh, salt and some pepper here. Yummy, yummy. And uh, then a few basil leaves. I'll just tear them up over here. And then what you could do is you could put this in the oven for a couple minutes and just warm oh. it up slightly. Oh, I like warm. And there you go. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. a little bit of balsamic vinegar over the top. Fabulous. And this yummy. doesn't take long. No, so easy. You can be domestically challenged like me and still do this. <laughs> yeah, you know, a lot of things, you know, you, when you have great product, you just want to let the product do the, the speaking it. for itself. And you don't really yeah. need to do a lot with it. And here you go. And then I'd have some croutons with it. So this is yummy, what the dish yummy. would be. Love it, Chef Rob. Right. the way. So then uh, another thing, uh, again, is we have such great product here in the California region, but you should source it out anywhere you are. Um, and let me get a bowl here. I like those words, source it out. I do too, because yeah. I live in New York City and I want to have a meal like this. Again, you know, <laughs> you the, the food that, that you're putting in <laughs> is the energy that you're going to use throughout yeah. the day. So right. you need to cook. This is some uh, quinoa, which is a Peruvian grain. Quinoa. Quinoa, quinoa yeah. yeah. And uh, I have some. Where do you some, buy that, Rob? Um, you can get it in most stores these days. Uh, mm -hmm. I know Whole Foods and, and uh, you know, the natural food stores carry it. But I think even Safeways and, and your you know, more common traditional stores carry it as well these days. It's pretty pretty common now. Mm. I had a little bit of broccoli, some sugar snap peas, a little bit of uh, corn. In this case, I grilled the corn in its husks. Oh, very nice. And then shelled it later. Some almonds. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I have a little bit of lemon zest and lemon juice. Ooh, wow. yummy. I have a little bit of uh, curry powder. Okay. Right mm -hmm. here. And uh, here I have a little bit of uh, arugula leaves. And again, I like to mix uh, the foods uh, up. That you don't just you're not eating potatoes or cheese mm -hmm. or or meat. You you mix up the types of foods that you're putting in your system, uh, and then a little of olive oil. And again, okay. oil is okay. Just not you don't want everything swimming in it. You right. know you need to have oil. Just not tons of it all the time. And as Gloria knows, I I cooked for them for about three three months. Yeah, you did. And, we uh, lost you know, uh, about. 
20 pounds. And, right. and, and you said you've never eaten so much. They've never Absolutely. eaten so much. They were full. Uh, and we were feel so good afterwards. Yeah. And we always had a snack every three hours, too. Right. It was amazing. And I, I even couldn't, I couldn't believe that I was serving so much food. And, you know, it wasn't, you know, they were eating meat. They were eating chicken mm -hmm. and fish and different vegetables and, and having desserts. But, uh, you know, it's, that looks it's good. putting good quality foods in your system. Absolutely. And uh, I want to say that you probably felt better throughout the day as well. Absolutely, we did. Someone said if you want to feel better quickly, prepare a meal like you're going to have somebody over. And make a beautiful tablecloth and set, set it up presentation-wise and you will feel better. And then here I have uh, some uh, chicken breasts that I, or uh, chicken thighs that I grilled up. That looks good. And put on top. And, now I think and that's that. interesting because you, you use chicken thighs too. Mm -hmm. and, and they're a little bit um, tastier than breasts. They, little, they have a little more little fat more in them, a little more flavor. And yeah, the great thing flavor. about them is that um, they're a little more uh, forgiving when it comes to cooking. With the, with the breast, it has less mm -hmm. fat in it. Uh, and we get past a certain point, it dries out and gets mm -hmm. chewy. And, and I could make and, uh, uh, I could make those for a couple of days and and put wrap them in the them fridge. Up and, and, yeah, absolutely, and, yeah. absolutely. I certainly do that. And okay. then uh, mm -hmm. one other uh, dish that I again something quick and and this seems so simple, but yeah. it's just so delicious. And so Love good. strawberries. And uh, my mother took credit for this dish for. 35 years of my life until I learned it was my grandmother's dish. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, so uh, what we uh, do is I, I have some uh, sour cream and I uh, just put that on, on a plate here. Sour cream. Sour cream. Okay. And uh, then just slice some strawberries up on top of it. Okay. And then we'll put a little brown sugar on it. And wow. uh, I served this in my restaurant for years and it was kind of like a joke, like people were mocking me like, oh, you know, Put a little talent into the food, mm, will you? Okay. And then they'd have it, and it's like they it's funny it. that it's so simple. I would not. So easy to I do. I would not even think of putting great. sour cream. Just a little thing of sour right, cream. Right. What? A, that's kind of a, and, and a then best dip. Just a little bit of uh, brown sugar on top. Wow. And yeah, not I mean, a lot. And uh, I'm gonna have to you know, look how that quickly it, these two dishes were to put together. Yeah. Um, they're very healthy, they have great nutrients, you're going to enjoy it, and you're going to feel great afterwards. That's great. Well, I want to tell everybody that um, they can go to opentohope.com, and uh, they will find your recipes here for the, what we've got here. And for our studio audience, we've actually got the recipes out for you in the hall. Excellent. So uh, it, it's a great thing and uh, wonderful. And we want to thank you for being on the show today, Rob. It's been Thank fantastic. you so much. It's always been enjoyable cooking you, for Chef you. Thank you, Chef Rob. And, and, uh, sharing your like spreading word. And uh, thank you all our other guests. This has been yes. the Dr. Gloria and Dr. Heidi Show, brought to you by the Open to Hope Foundation, with a mission of helping people find hope after loss. Dr. Gloria and Dr. Heidi invite you to visit them at opentohope.com, where you can listen to radio shows, watch Open to Hope television, read articles, and view books. Also, join them on Twitter and Facebook, and put your events on their international calendar. Thanks for watching.